Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Soham and today I'm reacting to, analyzing, and appreciating the brilliancy that is High Ren. Like many of you, this was my very first introduction into Ren's music. I think I was scrolling YouTube one day, I saw this very interesting thumbnail of a man playing the guitar, but in a wheelchair and in a hospital gown. It was just a very alluring and compelling image, so I had to click. I'm very easily influenced. So I click on the video and by the first minute, I'm hooked. By the second minute, I'm sold. By the third minute, I want to react and listen to every single Ren song that's ever been produced. I mean, that's how much of a grip Ren has on me and has had on many of you. So I wanted to do my best effort here and this reaction and this kind of just analysis to highlight all of the beautiful things that he does in this song to make this work of art truly as compelling as it was. And I may miss a few things here. It's not going to be a 100% wall-to-wall -wall comprehensive thing of every little idiosyncratic element that Ren produces, but it's more about the things that I notice. And I come from the perspective of somebody who loves music. I play the guitar. I love to sing. I like to spend a lot of my time listening to the music that I love. And Ren has very easily topped my charts for the music that I listen to in recent months because of all of the novelty that he provides to us. And honestly, the genuineness, the authenticity that is Ren. He's truly remarkable, a genius, a bard, a poet, <laughs> of like an actual teacher, a philosopher. He just does so much. He wears every hat and he wears it well. And he's a motive. He's a inspiration for me. He's a motivation for a lot of us and inspiring. So with all that out of the way, I wanted to jump into the reaction. If you enjoy it, hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. And without further ado, let's get into it. It's such a brilliant song. And don't mind me, I'm going to talk throughout. Let's pause it there. There's so much, and I've listened to the song, many of you have, so I'm gonna do my best to just give you all the nuggets of wisdom that I can. And right in the first minute, it's just guitar, it's just him being wheeled out onto center stage. I love all of the note choices that he uses. And this is a, a harmonic minor scale. So if any of you are music listeners, you can hear the darkness to the scale, to the pitches that he chooses. And it's specifically the harmonic minor scale where they sharp the seventh note uh, of the natural minor scale. And for, for me, as somebody who loves metal music, who loves metal core, rock, they use a lot of minor, mu uh, minor scales and minor notes, but then they oftentimes to add that extra level of danger, of depth, of sadness, of true despair, they add that sharp seventh, which makes it a harmonic minor scale. So Ren in the first minute shows his ability to riff on that scale in a way that you can actually remember every single individual note. The hallmark of a good guitarist is somebody who's able to play few notes and make every single note count. I struggle with this in my guitar playing is the fact that I I like to shred, I like to do a lot, but sometimes doing a lot, you're doing a lot, you're doing not really nothing at all. Less is more. And Ren shows that here. Every little phrase is easily identified, is easily digestible by an audience that isn't a music listener. So the harmonic minor scale, Ren's phrasing there, as well as he kind of leans into this classical style of guitar playing. I even noticed that when I was reacting to uh, the tale of Jenny and Screech was the fact that he loves to riff in a classical way. So you'd oftentimes hear, you know, classical musicians play the way he's playing on guitar there. Not many pop musicians do what he's doing. And Ren isn't in any of those categories. He draws from all genres of music. So even within this one minute that I've heard so far, you can hear that he's influenced from classical, from pop, from metal, 
it's so captivating. And somebody like me who loves that scale, when I heard it the first time played in this manner, I was sold. I was sold. heard him sing an ooh for the first time i was so taken aback because you can hear that the pitches that he's using are very melodic but at the same time there is there's some fallibility there you can hear the cracks in his voice it's not perfectly on pitch he sometimes falls down a little bit he sometimes misses the note on the mark and it's not over processed in post-production they're not trying to auto-tune his voice to perfection to be the radio edit to be the perfect version there's actual beauty in the imperfection and i love that he leaned into that and i loved how raw that felt and it's one of those things that it just it, it forces you to challenge your own assumptions of what music ought to sound like does it have to sound perfect all the time and what is perfect right it doesn't really matter it is what we care for it to be that's why it's fun to listen to your friends play an acoustic cover of a song instead of listening to the radio edited version because there's a different emotional emphasis that's added and when he's adding that to his music and his style and his singing, it's such a jarring difference than what most people are doing. So Ren just instantly stands among, uh, stands like out amongst the crowd of musicians that are out there, just from doing that alone. Let's go back. <laughs> So just a beautiful, beautiful melody. Hi there, Ran. It's been a little while. Did you miss me? You thought you buried me, didn't you? Risky. Cause I always come back. Deep down, you know that. Deep down, you know I'm always in periphery. Ran on your pleased to see me. It's been weeks since we spoke, bro. I know you need me. You're the sheep, I'm the shepherd. Not your place to lead me. Not your place to be biting off the hand that feeds me. Hi, Ran. I've been taking some time to be distant. Beautiful. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by myself since my therapist told me I'm ill. And I've been making some progress lately And I've learned some new coping skills So I haven't really needed you much, man I think we need to just step back and chill Ren, you sound more insane than I do You think- So, in the first back and forth there, right? We have these two different voices And the voices are matching the cadence of the guitar So, if you hear what Ren's doing When he's in that ferocious, angry version of himself, right? You can hear the thumping on the guitar Doom, 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 doom And you ha your head naturally bobs along with it and it creates this inner turmoil, this inner hypocrisy with we bob along to the thing that actually is tormenting us. We move along because it just our body naturally reacts to that uh, percussion element when you actually are playing guitar in this manner. So we always nod our head to the beat of the drum, right? We always follow what is laid out for us. But in reality, if we listen to the thing that we're nodding along to, it's actually the voice that's there to destroy us. And then we go from that immediately juxtaposed with the more timid, the more anxious, the more softer, quieter version of his voice, as well as the things that he's saying. And then you stack on top of that the fact that the guitar playing, the guitar uh, notes that he's choosing, he's no longer thumping the guitar to add that percussive element. He's just kind of letting it exist in this floating space. You didn't sign up to listen to me sing and do this, but I'm just trying to emphasize the fact that he's using two separate guitar progressions there to emphasize and highlight further these different actors within Ren himself. You have the evil side and the, the more timid side. And it's just so clever to do all of these things in parallel at once. And I'm sure you noticed that even with the videography, right? You see that when he's timid, the lights are on. When his angry voice comes out and he's actually in that worst part of himself in his shadow as carl jung may call it the lights start to flicker so so many things to look out for i'm doing my best to highlight them to all to you all hopefully it's not too annoying i do my best here really need to do much man i think we need to just step back and chill ren you sound more insane than i do you think that those doctors are really there to guide you been through this a million times your civilian mind is so perfect to always be lied to okay take another pill boy drown yourself in the sound of white noise follow this 10 step program rejoice all your problems will be gone fucking dumb boy nah mate this time is different man trust me i feel like things might be falling in place it is acting right 
so the acting is on point you can literally see the anxiety the fear the apprehension on Ren's face there and I really haven't commented much on the lyrics of the song so far but it's worth noting right you can literally hear the inner battle between the shadow and his sub and his actual subconscious and these are two competing parts of all of our brains we always have the part that is very optimistic we have the other part the voices inside our brain that tell us we can't do something and there's always this inner conflict and i love the artistic choice and many you know even in the song he claims eminem has done the same many artists and many people and pretty much everybody has this inner voice right that they continually battle with that pull, holds themselves back that prevents them from being their unified unadulterated self right the person that they actually ought to be and ought to represent externally to the world so ren does a beautiful job at showing this internal difference with his lyrics with the way he enunciates these words with his facial expressions with the guitar playing with the videography with the lighting it is quite literally a perfect one-to-one -one mapping of what you may feel emotionally through musical and artistic form so let's put that out there the lyrics are amazing i'm not going to deep dive into every little thing like that i'm again doing my best here it's just it's just brilliant Follow this 10 step program, rejoice, all your problems will be gone, fucking dumb boy. Nah, mate, this time is different, man, trust me. I feel like things might be falling in place. And my music's been kind of doing bits too. Like I actually might do something great. And when I'm gone, maybe I'll be remembered for doing something special with myself. That's why I don't think that we should talk, man. Cause when you're with me, it never seems to help. You think that you can amputate me? I am you, you are me, you are I, I am we, we are one. Split in two, that makes one, so you see. You gotta kill you if you wanna kill me. I'm not left over dinner, I'm not scraps on the side. Oh, your music is thriving, delusional guy. Where's your top 10 hit? Where's your interview with Oprah? I love, I love the fact that in that section, you have this back and forth, right? So, so far in this song, we've had the guitar playing on its own, and then a lot of back and forths with repetitiveness in terms of the guitar playing but you hear when you expect the evil side of Ren the shadow of Ren to be also thumping along to the guitar he actually silences that part of the guitar playing entirely just so that we can focus on Ren's delivery of the words if you want to kill you you got to kill me and it puts the emphasis on that song on that lyric in the song so much more than if the guitar was playing throughout so again like I hearken back to my previous comment about playing too much sometimes it takes away from the meaning of the song it actually de-emphasizes certain things less is more he literally gives us the space we no longer hear guitar all we hear is ren's voice and it's such a clever trick to get us to still in, in our brain play that bit but now we're cognitively focused on only his words at that point so again another just brilliant element to the song i remember a breaking benjamin song i think it's the diary of jane or I think it's the diary of jane there's a part of the song where right before the chorus it's just silence and then the drum hits and the whole band comes in and goes balls to the wall is what it is it's really remarkable and it's just if you're on stage listening to that you just feel like a, a elevation like you're almost like about to crash down in a roller coaster but it's the moment before the fall and it's, it's chef's kiss once again when you're with me, it never seems to help. You think that you can amputate me? I am you, you are me, you Silence. are I, I am we, we are one. Split in two, that makes one, so you see. You gotta kill you if you wanna kill me. I'm not left over dinner, I'm not scraps on the side. Oh, your music is thriving, delusional guy. Where's your top 10 hit? Where's your interview with Oprah? Where well, are your Grammys, Ren? Nowhere. Yeah, but my music's not commercial like that. I never chase numbers, statistics, or stats. I never write hooks for the radio, they never even play me, so why would I concern myself with that? But my music is- I love- when I heard him deliver that line, why would I concern myself with that? He's speaking it. It's not even singing it. There's no easily discernible rhythm there, right? And the fact that I know it is just, it just speaks to the amount of times I've listened to this song. But as an artist who sticks to the normal four, four meter, right? One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. It's very easy for us to just, okay, Let's sing right on the one. Let's add this element of the song right on the two, right on the first beat or the last beat of the measure. We can make these things because there's even subdivisions. But what Ren does there, and if I were to write it out rhythmically, it would not look like he's on the subdivision, right? It looks like he's somewhere in the middle. And again, excuse me, it's like fuel to this chaotic song because 
there's a lot going on already and now he's able to break the rules and bend the rules of music even more it kind of reminds me of again when ren was singing those ooze early on he wasn't hitting every note precisely but it still sounded beautiful similar uh similarly here he's not actually on all of the beats of the measure he's kind of almost like molasses just kind of flowing through that section just getting it out and it's brilliant i love the perfection in the imperfection right there is so much so much emotion and so much realness when i hear those things so again another thing that i just love another thing that i just love now your grammys ran no way yeah but my music's not commercial like that i never chase numbers statistics or stats i never write hooks for the radio they never even play me so why would i concern myself with that but so, my music is really connecting and the people who find it respect him. and you can almost hear too like as soon as he falls out of the why would i why would i concern myself with that when he goes through that section he immediately jumps back to a space where he is actually singing to the meter to the beat where it's easily discernible to our ears so he just throws in these little plus one percent and maybe you know that's like a plus 15 percent to the song but uh, brilliant absolutely brilliant then play me so why would i concern myself with that but my music is really connected and the people who find it respect it and for me that's enough because this life's been tough so it gives me a purpose i can rest in man you sound so pretentious ran your music is so self-centered no one wants to hear another song about how much you hate yourself trust me you should be so lucky having me inside you to guide and you hear he gives the space again in the guitar riff even when he doesn't have to to make certain punchlines hit even harder and even when he's spacing his lyrics within the track within the song over top of these chords he's not just flooding every single sentence with as many words and syllables as he can it's very metered it's very precise and you can always hear what he's saying and you're not losing him right you're kind of comprehending him as he's delivering the message to you. So it's perfectly paced lyrically. I don't feel like, you know, I can like deep dive into every single lyric as I'm listening to it for a first time. Like there's a lot going on, but when you hear it, you just instantly resonate and you're checking off everything he's saying. Like, I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree with that. And it's just a nine, you know, how long is it? Nine minutes, 19 seconds of just agreeing down the line. So. God, this reaction is going to take me forever. I apologize, okay? I'm really sorry. I just have so much to compliment. Trust me. You should be so lucky having me inside you to guide you, remind you, to manage expectations, provide you perspective. That thing you neglected, I get it. You want to be a big deal. Next Jimi Hendrix, forget it. Man, it's not like that. Man, it's just like that. I'm inside you, you twat. No, it's not, man. You're wrong when I write, so I belong. Let me break the fourth wall by acknowledging this song. Ren sits and down. Even here, you can hear that he's going, doing the back and forth. He's just doing it faster. He's doing it within the four chord progression. So if, if before he would play four chords on the evil side and then four on the anxious side. Now he's doing two on the evil side, two on the anxious side. So it's even further back and forth, even faster dissonance within oneself. The inner turmoil is escalating even more. The self-doubt, the self-arrogance, all of these problematic things are happening rapid fire. And it's also analogous to how you may feel internally as a real person, not just musically, right? You actually start from a place of, I actually have kind of grips on this. I can stay in one state of positivity and anxiety for longer, or I could fall into a state of inner turmoil and angst for a longer period of time. And then oftentimes you realize I shouldn't be in this negative state for that long. And so you try to pull yourself back, but you keep oscillating so fast. And honestly, the whirlwind is the chaos itself. And it becomes very hard to manage when you don't know what is what what's real what's not and eventually you reach this point of a singularity which ren will get to later in the song where it just all comes to a screeching halt it just blows up exponentially and then you're just left with the rubble left with the ashes so the back and forth here also has a double meaning to me because the speed at which the back and forth is happening is reflective of further distortion and uh let's say what would the word be deterioration of the mental state so there you go. Um, has a stroke of genius. He wants to write a song that was not done previous. A battle with the subconscious. Eminem did it. Played on guitar. Plan B did it. Man, you're not original, you criminal. Rip off artist, the pinnacle of your success is stealing other people's material. Ren, mate, we've heard it all before. Oh, she sells seashells on the seashore. Fuck you. I don't need you. I don't need to hear this. Cause I'm fine by myself. I'm a genius. And I will be great. And I will make waves. And I'll shake up the whole world beneath us. That's right. Speak your truth. Your fucking god complex leaks out of you. It's refreshing to actually. You say it instead of downplay it. 
uh, music is all about the creative process and if people can and what's so interesting is when you've heard this song many times over you hear the beat still going even when there's not any singing any guitar playing happening he's literally just using his voice but his voice is the music is the art it is part of the rhythm of the song it's just so clever and i love the acting that he always uses you can hear him literally mocking his other voice his anxious side of himself and it's just so believable and the fact that he's doing this all in one take what how that's right, speak your truth, your fucking god complex leaks out of you It's refreshing to actually hear you say it instead of downplay it uh, Music is all about the creative process And if people can find something to relate to within that, then that's just a bonus Fuck you, I'ma fucking kill you, Ren I'ma fucking kill me then, let's fucking have you, Ren I'ma do it, watch me prove it, who are you to doubt my music? Cause I call the shots, I choose if you die Yeah, I call the shots and so I choose who survives I'll tie you up in knots when I lock you inside News Flash, I was created at the dawn of creation. I am temptation. I am the snake in Eden. I am the reason for treason. Beheading all kings, I am sin, with no rhyme or reason. Son of the morning, Lucifer, Antichrist, father of lies. Mistopheles, truth in the blender, deceitful pretender, the banished avenger, the righteous surrender. When standing in front of my solar eclipse, my name is stitched to your lips. So you see, I won't bow to the will of a mortal, feeble and normal. You wanna kill me? I'm eternal and mortal. I live in every decision that catalyzes chaos that causes division. I live inside death, the beginning of end. I am you, you are me, I am you, friend. so much to say about that section and it ties into the point that I was making earlier about how the sides are now competing against one another faster and faster and they're tiring each other out and honestly at this point in the song the evil side wins you can hear the evil the malice the actual <laughs> championing of destruction of the mental state of the world around literally <laughs> somehow viewing evil as being a positive thing and it's just not the case and you can hear in the guitar playing the shift in the music you haven't heard uh, any of those chords anymore from the anxious section or the evil section it's now a new thing entirely it's chromatic and for non-music listeners or non-music theory understanders chromatic is just basically when you have multiple notes that are not part of a scale actually so before we were in this minor scale this natural minor scale harmonic minor where you would kind of understand like, oh, this is the note he's going to next. But now we're in a place of just any note is what is the next note. We're just further descending into madness incrementally, but also very quickly because you hear the speed at which he's playing these riffs now. So he goes from very incrementally, but also at a quick pace. So again, the deterioration of the mind as a reflection of how he's playing the guitar in this section here. It's very clever. And then, of course, the lighting is going off and even at a faster pace, too. So more mental deterioration being symbolized visually. And, you know, he, incre he increases the pitches, he decreases the pitches. You're going up and down, oscillating. But his cadence with his voice shows that it's happening at a very uh, ferocious pace. And also there's a buildup of emotion to the point where he dissolves back into the previous section of what we know to be the anxious uh, guitar section of the song but it doesn't sound as anxious right it sounds more calm and at ease and after the storm has passed there is some level of tranquility so it's just so clever for him to literally become possessed by the evil side both sides tucker each other out and then in the end it dissolves and there's some peace at the other end of this chaos and it's controlled chaos too that's what makes this art so clever is that it paints the story one-to-one -one of what mental decay looks like and how to best resolve those things and what we need to do going forward and what our inner turmoil looks like and how to best identify uh, those things within ourselves. I just, when I listened to the song for the first time, my mouth was gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked. It's truly one of the best pieces of art I've ever seen. Okay. We're just right back to that same guitar section. Hi, Ren. 
I've been taking some time to be distant. I've been taking some time to be still. I've been taking some time to be by myself and I've spent half my life ill. But just as sure as the tide starts turning, just as sure as the night has dawned. And you know, some of, so you can hear in his voice that he's more calm, he's not anxious, he's not angry. This is just Ren himself having prospered over some of these demons and just no more energy, just be real, be yourself. And he's showing that with his voice, but also with his guitar playing, right? He's not even adding extra bells and whistles to the previous guitar chord progression. He's just thumping the bottom string. It's simple. It gets the point across and we know what the other counterfactual sounds like. But again, with the simplicity, he's able to now force our attention onto his words, onto his delivery. And I also love the fact that there is some parallelism in the story. When you hear him at the beginning, he's talking about he's his spending half of his life ill. He's doing that again here. Just, <laughs> just brilliant, man. But just as sure as the tide starts turning, just as sure as the night has dawn, just as sure as the rain falls soon runs dry when you stand in an eye of a storm. I was made to be tested. I forgot the eye of the storm line, but you're in the eye of the storm. You're at the center of all this destruction of chaos, but actually that's probably the safest place for you to be is at the center because surrounding you in all that chaos is the eye of the storm, is that place where there isn't actually all of these rapid winds, these destructive forces. It's all around you now. You've kind of made it through that hurricane, made it through that storm, and there's no more rain on you. It's just clarity. It's just peace. So it's always it's always difficult. We have our own individual storms, making it through those things as fast as we can with as good of a head as we can on our shoulders. Best thing for us. We don't want to live in that constant state of anxiety, of difficulty, of depression, of guilt, of sorrow, of anger. It's not worth it. And it's the best thing we can do for ourselves is to find that peace. One is dry when you stand in an eye of a storm. I was made to be tested and twisted. I was made to be broken and beat. I was made by his hand, it's all part of his plan that I stand on my own two feet. And you know me, my will is eternal. And you know me, you've met me before. Face to face with a beast, I will rise from the east and I'll settle on the ocean floor. And I go by many names also. Some people know me as hope. Some people know me as the voice that you hear when you loosen the noose on the rope. And you know how I know that I'll prosper? Because I stand here beside you today. I have stood in the flame. And standing up is just the smartest thing he could do. It shows the hero's journey. It shows all of the difficulty he went through sitting down, for example, just this is a simple motion, right? Sitting down, standing up. There is a big difference metaphorically with his ability to be able to do that. Because when you're sitting down, you're kind of passive. You're uh, letting things happen at you. When you're standing up, you're taking your life in your own hands. So it's a bit of hope. It's a bit of responsibility. It's a bit of courage. It's a bit of bravery. There's a lot that can be symbolized and attributed to that simple motion of standing up. And when you pair that with the change in the guitar melody that's happened here, you hear kind of the overtones now that he's adding on the guitar melody. We went from something that was simple in the beginning of the peaceful section to a more complex guitar rhythm. Do, 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 do. These are newer notes that we haven't heard before. And they're higher up. They show, to me, musically, more hopefulness, more optimism. And when he stands up and he's playing it at the same time, his voice is getting more passionate. All of it at once feels like such a great moment of catharsis. I'm literally just having chills with all of the complexities that he's stacking one after the other, after the other, after the other, not to mention how good his lyricism is. Simple to the point, profound and impactful. Let's keep going. Some people know me as the voice that you hear when you loosen the noose on the rope. And you know how I know that I'll prosper? Cause I stand here beside you today. I have stood in the flames that cremated my brain and I didn't once flinch your shade. So cower at the man I've become When I sing from the top of my lungs That I won't retire I'll stand in your fire Inspire that me to be strong And when I am gone I will rise In the music that I left behind Ferocious, persistent, immortal like you We're a coin me to different sides <laughs>
it's so good. I mean, he hasn't sung throughout the entire song, right? You hear the ooh section at the beginning of the song, which we can attribute to this bookended part here, but he never actually sang fully. So when he screams, cower at the man I become, when I sing from the top of my lungs, it's such a new moment. It's a shock. I'd never heard Ren before. And the fact that he can also sing as beautifully and as painfully and passionately and emotionally as he is doing, uh, my heart, my heart just explodes, right? And to be able to do that, and he's also singing very high. I believe his voice would be a tenor, I think. Uh, or baritone, better baritone. I, I think I'm a baritone, so I'm a. He would be above my voice uh, in range. So he sings high. He's singing at the top of his lungs. You feel like all of that built-up emotion and rage and sadness and happiness and anger is all bubbling up at the surface and just has to be screamed out loud to actually reach this moment of catharsis. And so he does that, and it just feels like you could just cry. You could let all of your fears, all of your tears, all of the sad, all of it go. And that's why, I don't know if you guys have ever seen those videos of people who are primal screaming, right? They all come together in, in a group and just scream out loud. And people after that experience tell, uh, tell the cameras, they recount their experience and they say it was religious, it was cathartic. It felt like a release. It felt like I had years of bottled up emotions that I could just let go. And that's what music oftentimes is for a lot of us, is the ability to, on those choruses, on those impactful moments, allow us to enter these mental loops that we can release all of this negative energy that we may have, or let us feel the feeling that we're feeling through musical format. It's just truly, truly, truly something special. And music means a lot to me. If you're listening up until this point, I think it means a lot to you as well. His ability to grab us in this way nothing short of brilliant. Again, I, you can take a shot every time I say brilliant in this one, right? Uh, and you can hear it with his guitar playing. It's ferocious. It's fast. It's desperate. There's a lot of speed with the way he's playing. And he kind of mimicked that at the beginning, but it's not with this ferocity here. He's going balls to the wall. He's doing the extra mile. He's letting it all, all out right here. So when he goes from the singing into the back into the ooh section, it's an extended ooh section now. So he's adding more notes. His melody changes. He's getting higher. It's extended. You feel like it's just, just all out on the table. And that relief, that moment of clarity, that ability to just yell at the top of your lungs, get it all out, be beautiful, be brave, make mistakes, and then sit back down again. And we're back in this chill state. And that's where we're going to go. And it's just, so special. And the, the notes that he chooses for those ooze are just, again, so carefully chosen and random seemingly, but I know them all by heart. That just tells you how catchy it is. When I was 17 years old, I shouted out into an empty room, into a blank canvas that I would defeat the forces of evil. And for the next 10 years of my life, I suffered the consequences with autoimmunity, illness, and psychosis. As I got older, I realized there were no real winners and there were no real losers in psychological warfare, but there were victims. Mm and there were students. It wasn't David versus Goliath. It was a pendulum, eternally swaying from the dark to the light. I could comment on every little word that he said there, but the pendulum, right? Going back and forth between the voices. There's a constant inner turmoil. It's no one's really winning, right? One side shows up and you're doing well for a while. The other side shows up and you're not doing well for a while. And what did that state difference really do for you it just puts you in a further state of not realizing who you are and not being one within yourself and it's really a disservice to ourselves when we fall so far from who we actually are in an effort to appease others to redefine ourselves continually when we could just be ourselves be the best version that we can be improve incrementally in the ways that we see fit and not feel this constant need to be better or feel like we're worse or live in a state of 
anxiety, despair, grief. It's just, it's gonna go back. No real winners and there were no real losers in psychological warfare, mm -hmm. but there were victims mm -hmm. and there were students. And I love that he says there were no real winners, no real losers, no victims, there were students. We learn from all of this change, right? Pain is change, change is to learn. It wasn't David versus Goliath. It was a pendulum, eternally swaying from the dark to the light. And the more intensely that the light shone, the darker the shadow it cast. The higher your highs, the lower your lows. You had the best day of your life, and now you reference everything else that happens in your day to day in your life against that high point. And you're now depressed because it's, I could never, I could never attain that high, or was that the high of my life? Is that it? Is that all I have for myself? So it's this, it's this yin and yang, it's this juxtaposition of these are the great things that are out there for me. And actually there's always a negative side to that. And it's a matter of perspective on how you look at things, right? If something negative happens to you, do I have to look at it in a negative light? Or can I find a way to twist it into something positive? Not everything negative has to be negative, right? A loss doesn't have to be a loss. Whenever something goes poorly, you can look at it and say, good, I'm glad that happened because now I can learn from that and improve. Everything can be looked at positively. It was never really a battle for me to win. It was yeah. an eternal dance. Eternal dance. Yeah. And like a dance, the more rigid I became, the harder it got. Mm -hmm. The more I cursed my clumsy footsteps, the more I struggled. Mm -hmm. So I got older and I learned to relax. Yep. And I learned to soften and that dance got easier. It's, it's so true because, again, we realize like, we're not the perfect version of ourselves. We're not always doing the best thing at all times. We have these negative thoughts. We finally cave into those negative thoughts. We follow our vices. We do the wrong thing. We hurt others and we don't want to, and we can't always be the perfect person. So we have to be able to do our best when we can and show ourselves grace when we fail, be able to forgive ourselves, forgive others, because really this is all of our first shot at life. And I heard this interesting and brilliant quote that we're all just doing our best. Everybody is just doing their best. And, you know, there's truth, the truth, truth to that. I think there are evil people in the world who their best is completely opposite to everyone else's. But it's an eternal dance that we try to improve. We try to improve. We try to improve. And it's hard. And you don't have to beat yourself up constantly. Take the wins. Congratulate yourself for the little things and just move the needle. Increase your baseline ever so slowly. Create that strong foundation for yourself, for the people around you. And Ren is just wisdom bomb after wisdom bomb after wisdom bomb here. The footsteps, the more I struggled. So I got older and I learned to relax and I learned to soften and that dance got easier. It is this eternal dance that separates human beings from angels, from demons, from gods. And I must not forget, we must not forget that we are human beings. It's so true. Everything he says, every lyric in the song, it speaks to the human reality. And again, at the end of the day, we do our best. We're human. We have flaws. We fail. We do things we don't want to do. We hurt others around us. And we shouldn't, right? We shouldn't. It's a bad thing objectively. And yet it still happens, right? Sometimes you'll open the door and someone will, someone else will be on the other side and you hurt their fingers. That happens to me at the gym all the time. I open the door and sometimes like somebody pushes on the door on the other side too far and now my finger hurts. It happens. You have to be graceful. You have to be understanding that you could make that same mistake. Some people are vicious and they don't care and they won't apologize and they'll feel make you feel worse for you feeling the pain, right? They are narcissistic. They are... 
those sides of people exist within yourself too. And that's what Ren's pointing out is we all have these dichotomous sides of ourselves. And really two sides is a bit simplistic in that sense because we have so many different lenses that we can view ourselves through at any given time, right? The best version of myself today could be vastly different than the best version of myself tomorrow in a week's time. I'll value different things. I'll weight things differently. I'll feel differently towards other things. And <laughs> I could one, I could love one version. I could hate the other. And there's a kaleidoscope of personalities that exist with, within us all. And we just have to soften. We have to relax. We have to allow ourselves to come into our own energy as opposed to constantly ridiculing and hurting our own mental because our mental health is the most important thing we have for us. And Ren is just highlighting all of these human realities. Yeah, let's just be better to ourselves so that we can be better for the others around us. I hope you enjoyed the reaction and analysis. I know this was a, a long one, so hopefully you got something from it and enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Take care and peace.